we are living in very difficult days. It seems that no matter what we hear, it's trying to take our happiness, our confidence away from the ways of life. The news are degrading. What governments are doing are not fulfilling. The society seems to be going in a wrong way, in a wrong direction. Sometimes even within the church realm, we find that there are things that we cannot trust. And therefore, we are living in a trustless society, in a trustless world. And it is very difficult for Christians to be able to continue in what they are believing in because we are bombarded by wrong decisions and news at all times. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, verse 35, he says, do not cast away your confidence, which has great re recompense of reward. It is a command. It is a duty. It is something that the apostle reminds the church, and we are the church. The truth is perilous time that we are living in. We must not leave our confidence in which we have subscribed the day that we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember that when we accepted the Lord, we have made a decision. I have, and I'm pretty sure that you have. Your decision was you raise your hand and you pray for the Lord to clean your soul and your heart. You have said, and I have said, Lord, I will follow you and serve you all the days of my life. Those were the days in which we have made a commitment. We have made a commitment to God that we are going to serve him and we are going to be in his side for all the days of our life. There is no way of backing out because we have given our promise. And the promise that we have given is not the promise that the world gives, but is a promise that came out of our soul from the deepest of our heart. And we have said, Lord, I will serve you and I will be with you. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26, he says, For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being shaken. It is the confidence in the Lord that will keep our pathway because he is the light, he's our pathway, and is the only way that we are and can be going to heaven. We have made a promise. It is not the promise that the world gives, but is a promise of a, of, of a politician, but it was a promise that we have given to God we are going to serve him. Because of that promise, I cannot leave my confidence. I cannot stand back. I cannot fling my confidence away. I cannot say, I will serve the Lord, and now I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. I cannot even say, I'm going to weaken my confidence in God, and I will serve a little bit of the world and a little bit of, of the world, because the man that is in double-sided, he will never see the presence and the glory of the Lord. If we want to see the glory of the Lord, we must renew our own confidence, what we have promised to God. We must renew what we have said to him in the days that we were saved, when he came and he touched our life. Because of that, I cannot turn back. Because of that, I cannot go away. Because of that, I cannot leave the Lord. And because of that, I must strengthen my confidence and pray that my confidence is strengthened in the Lord days after days. But I cannot turn back because not only I have given a promise to God and my promise is true and must be true and it has to last forever, but I have also, uh, he, he has also given a promise to me. 
he, the day that I was saved, he gave me a promise. The first promise was that I will not, uh, that he will, uh, that he will answer my prayer wherever I ask him anything in his name. But whatever I ask, he will answer my prayer. That is a promise. And if that is a promise, it has to happen. If that is a promise, it must come to pass. Therefore, when we are praying, we pray with confidence that he will answer our prayer. A couple of things which I have said many times, but I think I want to remind you again. You remember what I told you that at the end of world, just about the end of World War II, there was a group of our people who were taken prisoners, and they were condemned for life in prison because they were found praying the Lord in somebody's house. They hadn't done anything wrong. They were just praying God. But that was the law. You could not be assembled together in any place, and therefore uh, they were taken prisoners. They were prisoners for a time. And there was quite few of them who were resident, and therefore they were going to be condemned even harder, and some of them for a long period of time to come home. It was that night that a group of people got together, those who were left behind. They were not leaving those who were gone alone, but they came together in prayer. They began to ask God for doing something and to deliver our brothers and sisters who have been taken prisoners. It was about 11 o'clock at night when there was a noise in the street. And somehow, some way, nobody knew what was happening. So somebody opened up the windows and looked outside and there was a group of people in cars and marching down saying, we are free, we are free. Finally, fascism has been taken down. My friend, I don't know. If it was a political maneuver, it was an answer to prayer. I like to think there is an answer to prayer because if at that time, at that moment, to happen, it has to be an answer to prayer. Why? Because God, because Jesus has said, Whenever you pray, I will answer your prayer. We pray with confidence. We must believe that he is going to answer our prayer. And therefore, he will answer our prayer. Another thing happened within the family. It was one day when we had a phone call. My auntie was very sick. The doctor has said that there was no hope. The varicose vein had gone bad in her leg and had gone into cankers and the canker and they had to uh, amputate her leg. It was made already a decision and the appointment for surgery was for the following day. She knew that there were people that believe in God and they had confidence in God and therefore she called up. And a group of three or four people went to her home. I had to go with them because they wouldn't leave me home alone. Uh, I was too young. Mm -hmm. And so when we arrived there, they began to pray. And they prayed for about 20 minutes or half an hour. I don't remember what the time it was. Her husband was in the corner somewhere, and he was there crying his tears out because of his wife. My auntie was laying down, and her leg was... Uh, uh, was, th was this big, I could see it was this big, and it was ready to be cut. Suddenly the presence of the Lord came. Jesus said when he saved me, that he will, what? Answer my prayer. And he will answer our prayer. And so that night he answered our prayer. My auntie was made whole, completely healed. The surgery was not taking place anymore. Her husband, when he saw his wife was getting the leg, was very normal again, right in front of his eyes. He began to raise his hands up to the Lord and began to say, Oh God, save me, save me, for I want to serve you all the days of my life. 
what you have done for me today, I will never forget it. And he died, and he never forgot what God had done for him. When you pray with confidence, I will answer your prayer. I cannot turn back because he will answer my prayer. And if I turn back, you know, my prayers will not be answered anymore. If I turn back and think my confidence, his prayer will not answer anymore. Sometimes we just wonder why the Lord doesn't answer our prayer. Maybe we should not look in the mirror and look to our own self and say, God, do I trust you? Do I have confidence in you as much as I did the day that I was saved? Because he has promised me I cannot turn back. I cannot turn back. Many times in life we become bored. Have you ever been bored? I have. Sometimes when you say, oh, i got nothing to do, i got nothing to go, no place to do, nothing to do, I, I just don't know what to do, I'm bored. Young generation keeps saying all the time that they're bored because they don't know what to do. But Jesus promised to give me activity. He promised me that I will never be bored again in my life because he has given me activity. And he says like this, And Jesus said unto them, Mark 1, 17, Come unto me, <laughs> and I will make you what? Fishers of men. No more bored. There is no more bo bo boredom anymore. I'm becoming a fisher of men. My brother is a fisher of fish. But he's also a fisher of men. I am not a fisher of fish, but I am a fisher of men. Hallelujah. And we are all fishers of men because God made us so. And because Jesus has promised that we will be fishers of men because he has made us so. I cannot turn back. Why? Because he has made me a promise. And the promise is that yes, and amen. There was an activity when the uh, World War II ended. The activity of those people who were jailed and held, repressed for so many years. Suddenly they found the way that the war was over and they could suddenly release that blast of Holy Spirit which was in their heart and in their life. And they began to move into activity. The time of being, uh, the time of being repressed was over, and it's time to go for activity. The promise of Jesus was that He will leave His presence for us, and He will be a mediator for us. He has given us activity, and therefore, at that time, they began to go out. I remember I was about that high. Was I ever that high? I can't remember. I have to ask my mother. <laughs> and I can't ask my mother because she's up there. So, oh, well, we'll go with what we got. Huh? <laughs> we do our best with what we have. Yeah. Anyway, a group of people from the church, they will go into a square and they begin to sing and praise and uh, play some music. People will come around from all over the place and suddenly the preaching of the gospel. People began amazed of what they were hearing because they never heard it before. And these people who were preaching, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and they were just releasing years of repression in which was down. And that just like an atomic bomb when it exploded. You don't trust the Pentecostal. You never know what's going to happen. People were getting saved. Within a few years, the church grew in a, in, in a large, large place. I remember every month we had to move the place of worship because it was too small. And so we had to go to a different place and then to a different place and then to another different place because God has given us the power to make us active. And if you are bored, my friend, if I am bored, my friend, let us look at the Word of God and let us say, Lord, 
help me and give me the activity in which you have released unto me so that I can be able yeah, to, that I can be able to do it for the glory of God. Jesus never changed. So his promises will always be there. Hebrew 13, 8. Jesus is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. I cannot turn back because he has given me comfort. Have you ever gone through a hard time? Have you ever gone through a tunnel that is so dark that you couldn't see? And you couldn't see the end of the other side? You turned back and you couldn't see the light on the other side either? Have you ever been closed in in such a way that you will never be able, that you were not able to see through, for the, to see the light of the day anymore? It seems like nothing was, was happening. It seems like that nothing was happening the way you would like to happen and everything was going the way it was going and you could never really find out the solution anymore. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even in the dark tunnel. Let me tell you a story. This is true. Because my mother said it to me. See, my mother was in jail too. <laughs> God bless her heart. She's not now, but she was then. My mother was the last of the Assemblies of God persecuted person in Italy that died. So she lived a long life to be the last one of that particular generation. Anyway, she was in jail. When she came home, of course, you're curious. What do you do when you're in jail, mom? And um, <clears throat> what, what activity do you have? She said, well, we didn't have any activity. We were just a group of ladies in one jail. So what we did, we just sat down on the floor, and we began to sing a few choruses, and then each one would repeat a scripture somehow. Doesn't make any difference if it was Genesis or Revelation. It makes no difference. The scripture is a scripture, isn't it? And if you believe and have confidence in the scripture, that is the, the it, and there is no way out. So they were just repeating scripture. They were not coherent with each other, but they were just saying it anyway, because the scripture is a power in itself, no matter how you coordinate it together. And she said, as we were doing that, suddenly the power of the presence of the Lord began up, came upon us. Now, you get a bunch of women, the Italian women who are Pentecostal, and you got a problem, my friend. They began to shout and yell and scream and, and jump and do all kinds of things. And, the, and they're making so much noise that the jailer came in, opened the door and said, What's the matter with you ladies? You should be ashamed of yourself. You are in jail. You left your kids and the children and everything else. And one of the dear old ladies, she got up and she said, You know what? The God which we serve is right here with us because he has promised never to leave us alone. She became pale in her face. She began to look around, thought maybe somebody snuck in in the middle of the night. She didn't see anybody, so she went out, jammed the door back, closed the door and put her hand in her head and he said, they are crazy, they are crazy, they are crazy, they are crazy. Of course they are crazy. I am crazy. I'm crazy about the Lord. What's the big deal? A lot of people are crazy about football. I'm crazy about the Lord. What's a big deal? I don't know much about baseball. Some people are crazy about fishing. That's the big deal. <laughs> I can't fish anyway. Did I tell you the first time I went to fish? I was in England. And uh, all the kids, I told you, did I? No. Uh, uh, and all the kids that were going fishing. Oh, we're going fishing today. We're going fishing. England, the place where I was, there had a lot of ponds and the, there were fish in there. So one day they forced me to go with them. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. So we went fishing. They gave me a stick with a thing there and I put them on the water. And I did up and down for a while. 
Then they say, you got one, you got one, because my rod was moving. And I got a fish was this big. That was my first, and that was my last. <laughs> so it was that big. I took it off the hook and I put them on a, they said, oh, just put them on a, on, on a boat. They said, it'll be okay. But my heart been felt for that poor fish. His eyes were red. He began to grasp for air. <coughs> I feel like choking myself. Never went fishing again. I don't know. Do you ever feel sometimes that you do know much? But you know that Jesus has given you the authority or the promise that if you are confident in him and stay close to him, he will give you knowledge. John 14, 26 says like this, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. What did Jesus say unto you? Oh, well, I don't remember what was so, much, so, so long ago. Let the Holy Spirit remind him to you. Because whatever he said at that time, he meant it. And whatever he meant it, he's going to make it happen. And whatever he's going to make it happen, it will help our life to live for the glory of God. He has given us a promise. No wonder I cannot turn back. No wonder I cannot fling my confidence. No wonder I can, must I have confidence in him. Because he has given me a promise. If I turn back, I'm going to lose all of those promises if, which he has given me. I'm not going to go much longer. But there is only one thing in which I must have to say. Today, I might have knowledge answered to prayer. I might have all of those things in which he has promised me. But there is one thing which he has promised me, which is higher, bigger, more glorious than anybody can even think or imagine. He has promised to go and to prepare a place for me. He is going to make a place specially for me. He is going to make a place specially for you, especially for your character, for your will, for your, uh, for your uh, need, for what you want. He will make it specially for you. I can never find a house here that will sit all of, suit all of my needs and whatever I really want. But He will make one that will suit my needs and and it will be mine forever and forever and forever. And if I lose my confidence, I'm going to lose my house. And my friend, that house is on the streets of gold. Ah, who cares about what's going on and the shares going up and going down? The dollar goes up, the dollar goes down, and the world keeps going. It doesn't make any difference, really, because I don't look at paper. That's all paper. The street, the city that I'm going to leave, they are made of gold. Hallelujah. That's why I cannot lose my confidence. I must regenerate my confidence in Him, my trust in Him. I have to trust Him, and when I pray, I have to trust Him with all of my heart, with all of my life. Renew our trust today for the kingdom of God. Let us stand for a minute, shall we? Maybe your confidence is not so strong today. Maybe you're going through a tunnel which is too hard to funnel through. Maybe something happened somewhere sometimes in which has disturbed your relationship with the Lord. Let us strengthen our confidence today.
Let us renew our confidence today. Remember what you say to him. Say it again for the glory of God. I want to renew my confidence in him. Who else wants to renew their confidence in him? Let us raise our hands. Let us renew our confidence into the presence of the Lord for the glory of God. Lord, we want you to move in our midst. Lord, we want to see activity that will be glorifying your name and your glory. Lord, we want to see your presence in our heart and in our life. Renew our confidence in you, we pray, O oh Lord. Make us confident and trustful for what you can do and believe with all of our heart that you can do it and we will see it for your glory. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we really, really, really love you and with all of our heart. Forgive us if sometimes we come short, but Lord, you know our heart, we love you. We love you, Lord, because you have given us the promise and we have promised to you. Let us renew our confidence. Let us not cast away our confidence. Let me read that scripture again before I... Cast not therefore your confidence, which has great recompense and reward. My reward is the city of heaven. My recompense are the streets of gold and to live with the Lord forever and forevermore. Thank you very much. God bless amen, you. Amen, amen, amen. Just stay there, Joe. Just stay there. Stay there. Amen. Joe, my mansion in heaven is going to have a, a big Ooh. lake with a lot of fish. At the back with prawns and fish and... I'll come and see you. Yeah, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. I know of you course, will. Of course. I know you, you, you can cook prawns pretty well. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> there may be something, well, obviously, that might have touched your heart this morning as Joe just shared those things. and I really believe in impartation. I believe that this man has served God faithfully for many, many years. And I know that he carries an amazing mantle, amazing anointing. He's spoken into my life many, many times. He's been a great friend. But I also know, too, that he's got the ability to help you through some things. And I was particularly thinking about that tunnel and you're in the middle of that tunnel. You can't see in front of him. You can't see behind him. You don't know how to get through it. And there's not one person in this room that hasn't been in that tunnel, hasn't been in that place where the enemy tries to throw everything at you, to stop you. He wants you to turn back. But I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I honestly believe that he will answer our prayer. I believe that there's no turning back. And uh, this morning, if you're here and you'd like Joe to just come into agreement with you, touch your life. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, there is a great reward. He is our reward, but there's even a greater reward, many rewards that God wants to make available to us. So. This morning, if you want to come and allow Joe to pray with you, minister to you, that will be wonderful.